Today we're talking about our PM039 heavy duty airless sprayer. And this is the largest sprayer in our line. It's got an extremely powerful brushless motor. It's 1800 watts, which is 2.4 horsepower, running the reciprocating mechanism and then uh, the piston type pump. And notable feature about this is our, is our heavy duty suction head. And this is specially made for very viscous materials like drywall mud and plaster and so forth. The ball is actually right down the bottom and it's got a spring and a ceramic ball, very long wear, and there's an intake strainer. The inlet strainer is a number 20 inlet strainer. It's got a very heavy duty frame and you can see it's got these hooks for hooking to our optional plaster tank. And it's got inflatable tires and a really nice toolbox on top which you can put your different kinds of tips and filters and whatever you need for your spraying job. And there's also this nice rack for putting your hose uh, and your cable as well. And it's retractable. If it's in your way, you can retract it. And then the machine comes really, fairly complete for, for spraying. We provide you with a 3 8 uh, hose with a quarter inch whip hose on the end. We've got two pump filters at 100 and a 60 mesh. A contractor type gun with a filter. Uh, the chip guard as well as a, we give you a 539 tip and a seat and throat seal oil and this special wrench, this spline wrench, this is for your, your pump filter and also we give a, a tummy bar that's for adjusting your packing It's got a very sophisticated yet simple to use electronic pressure control system. And you can see it's a very easy to use electronic control. You've just got some simple controls. You've got your on off. You can choose between uh, the display of PSI or bar for your pressure. And this is your pressure control, which can go down to zero all the way up to your maximum pressure. And that's how you set your pressure. And it, and it, it will also uh, give you displays of any error if there's some kind of problem with the machine that will just show on your display. For daily maintenance of your pump, we have an access door here. Alright, so whenever you're working on your pump, like every morning, you put in your throat seal oil. You just put in a few drops through that, through that hole, and that will keep your uh, paint from sticking to your packings. And also, sometimes you'll need to adjust your packing nut. If, you, if you're getting some paint leaking out of the top of the pump, you can just use this Tommy bar and you can tighten the packing nut. And then when you're done, you just close it down. Ah, and this is the ball, the priming valve, and this is a ball type valve, which is very heavy duty. This is your uh, drain hose. And this goes this way to open, this way to close. And this is our pump filter. And we need this special spline wrench to open it. It just opens like that. And to mount your filter, you, you choose which filter you want. You can either do the, let's say this one will use the, the number 60. And you just uh, unscrew the, the cap and you mount the filter. It kind of pops in place and then you uh, thread it on. And then uh, for assembly, you just uh, Put the, the hose on the fitting and tighten it. And notice there's a plug here. And this plug is if you want to run two guns. Because the, the, for a lower, for smaller tip sizes, this motor can run two guns at the same time. All you need to do is uh, remove that plug and put in another fitting, and then you can put on two different hoses. And uh, after you, uh, as soon as you put on your hose, uh, you will talk about assembling your. Okay, the first thing we do is talk about assembling our gun. And you see it's got this hand guard and it's engaged in this, uh, in this slot here. So all you do is you pop it out and rotate it out of your way. And then you remove this. This takes a 24 millimeter wrench. And you remove it. And this is your gun filter. You see it's got this spring. This spring goes 
toward the, the, the gun body. And then the other side goes, goes into the handle. So you just put it in here with the spring facing out. And then engage it in that hole. And then you tighten the handle. And your gun is ready to go. You, you put your hand guard back down and you engage it in these slots here. And there's your hand guard. Now this is the gun safety. You see here you take it and you rotate it. And that allows you to be able to trigger the gun. And you put the safety snaps into that slot and then your gun is un untriggerable. And now we're going to talk about assembling the tip. Now the tip, tip comes with two parts. You have uh, this part and you have the main body of the tip. And you have the guard. And you may notice uh, there's a little end on here. That's actually for helping you to assemble this piece. So all you do is you mount it on there like that. And you look at the alignment. You want to have this, this is where the tip's going to go in, and so you have it lined up so it will, it will line up like that. And you push it in there. And there. And we're in. There, now it's in. And then the tip goes in. And notice, like that, see the tip isn't really all the way in. It has to make sure you go all the way. There, now you're in. And now you just thread it onto the gun. Yeah, the seal. I hear the seal go in now. And there you are. You, you put it whatever orientation you want it as. And you notice the tip. This is the forward direction for spraying. And you, if you need to clean the tip, sometimes you get a little clog in there, what you can do is you can reverse it all the way. And now the tip is essentially backwards. And then you trigger it, and that will clear any clog. And then you can put it back in the forward spraying position. The only position the, the, the tip can be in is either fully forward or fully reversed, never in between, because that will cause a blockage. And that would be bad. Yeah, and then the tip will always have this identification tag on it. All right, and there's your tip. Make sure it's tight and fully engaged. And you're ready to you're ready to go with the tip. And then, of course, you know, mounting the gun to the hose is very simple because uh, this this uh, this this is turnable. And so and so is this. So it just makes it very easy. You just thread thread on the hose, and then here you're going to need two two wrenches. One wrench to hold this knot, and the other wrench to tighten the actual hose on there. One's a 17. One's a 21. And now your, your gun is completely ready to go. And the hose goes on the rack like so, and the gun has a clip that clips on to the rack and it makes for a very neat and complete system. Today we're going to tell you about the optional plaster tank, which works so well with the M039 and it makes working with plaster very easy. Just, you can load the plaster right into the tank and just directly draw from the tank. And it comes with everything you need to attach with the tank. It comes with a special uh, coupling head, which is an adapter head, which will take the place of your normal inlet uh, suction head. And it comes with a, a special valve, which uh, has a ball valve incorporated into it. This will couple the tank with the machine. And also we have a special wrench. Uh, this is the, the hook wrench side. It's used for tightening these couplings. And it also can be used to open your bag of plaster. And then the other side is for scraping the rollers. And you can see
see the top, the special ringer, and these rollers need to be cleaned the plaster we have. And it's also a scraper plate with two bent bolts and a table plate, which is used to uh, make it easier for starting off your plaster with this layer on top of the stand there, and, and then you do your plaster. And now I'll tell you how, how to connect the machine together with the tank. Now to switch to the adapter, we have to remove our entire suction head. We'll start with the inlet strainer, unscrew it from the bottom to give you clearance. There's the inlet strainer, put it aside, and then you take off and then you remove the suction head completely. And now we need to transfer this, the check ball side of the pump into the adapter. We'll just take out the parts, the ball guide, and the seal, and the spring, and the ball, and also the, the, the intake disc. That's, in other words, that's the ball seat. And it has to be pushed out. It's only held in with, with an O-ring, but you probably should maybe just use, I'm using the Tommy Bar and a soft hammer, gently tap it out. It, it's not really that tight. And then you just take it and you transfer it into the adapter head and press it in place. Okay, there it's in. And now we have our ball and our spring. So you put the spring in the guide and the ball. And you just put it in place and then the seal and then you mount it onto the suction side of the machine. And now we just mount the complete assembly with the check point in place onto the pump. And that will allow us to join with the tank. And now we mount our coupling valve onto the bottom of the tank. Start the threads. And we use the hook wrench engage this slot to tighten the, the collar. Now you just remove the plug and you couple the machine. The best way is to uh, leave the tank where it is and the machine goes on to the tank. The hooks engage. Line them up, and then final tighten in with your hook wrench. Now to operate the plaster tank, there's a few extra features that make it really convenient. First off, we have this table plate, and the table plate, you lay on the tank, and then you lay your bag of plaster on the top of the tank, and then you use your hook wrench started as you squeeze out the plaster and then to get every last bit of plaster out you use the ringer and the ringer will allow you to squeeze all the plaster out of the tank and then if your rollers get all dirty you can just wipe them down with this tool and then finally we have a scraper plate which allows you to make full use and not waste any plaster just goes into the tank after you apply the plaster. Now the scraper plate has these rubber seals on the sides and it scrapes down the sides of the tank to allow you so that you don't waste any plaster. And you'll notice it has these two screws and what these are for are used as vents because once, uh, once it's down and into the bottom of the tank there'll be a, a suction created, a vacuum. And so you can remove these screws to break the vacuum and allow you to remove the, the plate.